everybody. Before I forget, let me start by saying that I want to thank the Wellfest people, everyone with Wellfest, One Three Foundation, and oh, this is a tongue twister for me, the World Cetacean Alliance. Did I get that right? Yes. All right. I was about that part. All right, so um, honestly, thank you for everything and thank you for allowing me to be here today. So for my presentation today, I just want to kind of break it down the way it's going to go so you can kind of follow along better. So it's mainly going to be about blackfish and the effect on SeaWorld, how it affected them then and today. And then it's also going to go into um, my journey. How did I go from being a killer whale trainer for 14 over 19 years to now be, you know, speaking to all of you today? So I'm just going to jump right in so that way as these things jump around you can kind of follow and then I'll hopefully close it up with something nice. Alright, so just two weeks ago I was interviewed by Pim Fox on Bloomberg TV which aired internationally. Now since my interview was live, SeaWorld waited until the end of the broadcast to submit this carefully worded, prepared statement, which they have become infamous for. So, so Amy Jensen, who is the SeaWorld spokesperson of the moment, because they obviously have a revolving door with that, she says, despite the false claims from John Hargrove and other extreme animal rights activists, we provide the highest standards of care as noted by the Association of Zoos and Aquariums and are highly regulated by the federal government. Our whales are healthy and thriving. Now, you see extreme animal rights activists highlighted because as you know, if anyone says anything against SeaWorld, you are immediately an extremist and you're an extreme animal rights activist. So, I personally find that very offensive, but we should all be very used to it by now. All right, now, what's interesting is this was a SeaWorld spokesperson, and what she said, her, you know, which was clearly uh, uh, offensive and, and not accurate, but I wanted to go on to what, what past SeaWorld spokespeople have said, um, and it, it actually has to deal with some aggression. So, in 2006, Orchid grabbed a trainer, Brian, uh, Brian Rokish, and he, she drug him to the bottom of the pool, the front show pool, it was during a show, 36 feet down, the trainer tore a ligament in his left ankle, and when this happened, when this event, when anything like this happens, we the trainers, we clearly know what is aggressive behavior and what's not aggressive. This was never an investigative period or was Orchid being aggressive? You know, what do we know? We knew immediately Orchid was being aggressive. Anytime a whale grabs you in their mouth and drags you down to the bottom of the pool, it is an aggressive event. So there was no need for uh, any of the trainers to get together to speak about it or discuss it to figure out what, what do we think happened. But the, um, let's see, who was it at that time? So SeaWorld spokesperson Dave Kutz said, quote, trainers do not believe Orchid's behavior was aggressive, end quote. Okay? Clearly, at this point that he made this statement, not only did all of us trainers involved know that it was clearly an aggressive event, but it had also already been officially documented in what we call a corporate incident report. So SeaWorld can't escape those records. And their worst nightmare will be to one day litigation to happen and those records become public information under the Freedom of Information Act because all of these aggressions are in the corporate incident reports. And it's very clearly outlined, aggressive behavior, this is what happened, that would happen. So, so it's just important to know that here is another statement by a SeaWorld spokesperson that they knew at the time that they made it that it, to the media that it was false. So going on 2007, Orchid Knox trainer Wendy Ramirez, who used to be my best friend of 20 years, she knocked her over and behind an elevated wall. Wendy was hospitalized after striking her head on the concrete, losing consciousness. SeaWorld spokesperson at that time, Darla Davis, described the incident as a quote, bump from Orchid 
and stated, quote, she just lost her balance, meaning Wendy just lost her balance. And then Dave Coots added to that, quote, it was unclear if the whale intended to headbutt the trainer or accidentally bumped into her. Okay, this is exactly what happened in that incident. Orchid was being ultrasounded. She was having an ultrasound performed on her because we were trying to get her pregnant. And Wendy was in control of Orchid and the vets needed to step over the wall with the ultrasound equipment. It's our jobs as trainers that if we see any behavioral change in the whales that may show that they're becoming uncomfortable, we tell the vets to immediately step behind the wall with their equipment so they're behind a barrier and they're safe. So when this happened, Orchid became tight. She had tight back, she started emitting vocalizations, she was becoming uncomfortable with the procedure. So Wendy immediately told the vets, get your equipment, get behind the wall immediately. They did. Wendy's still over the wall with Orchid. Orchid sits up, she comes out of the lineup, she sits up in front of Wendy, and Wendy asked her what we call in behavioral terms a DRI, a differential reinforcement of incompatible behavior. She asked her just to slide, do a slide out, but away from her, not in front of her, but in a slide out, which is another area of the pool. By doing this, if she did the correct behavior, it would be incompatible with any type of regression with Wendy. But what Orca did with lightning speed and without Wendy even having a chance to react, to even take a step behind the wall, Orchid came up, closed mouth, and struck Wendy right in the chest. And that's what knocked Wendy behind the wall and onto her face and made her lose consciousness. Not because Wendy lost her balance. So again, at the time that this happened, it was clearly written up as a court, officially documented as a, a corporate incident report. So this little uh, media, to the media from their spokesperson uh, was a false statement and they knew it was false at the time they made it. All right, the death of two trainers. Now, I say the death of two trainers, but we should never forget Kelty Byrne, who died in 1991 at Sealand of the Pacific by Tillicum, Nuka, and Haida, primarily by Tillicum, but um, she gets lost in this, this discussion a lot, I think, because, you know, Don, Don's death got so much media attention, Alexis hardly got any. Uh, Kelty is almost forgotten, and I always feel, you know, we need to remember her. And also Daniel Dukes. You know, Daniel Dukes, yes, he was a trespasser at SeaWorld, but he certainly did not deserve to die um, by getting into telecom school and dying the way that he did. So we should we should not forget those people either. So so Keto was uh, Keto, who I used to actually swim with and work with in California uh, before he was moved. Um, he killed Alexis on Christmas Eve, 2009. It was during a session, so there was no public. And there was no, um, we, ha we do have top water and underwater video that I've personally reviewed. We did a full count analysis, but of course that was never released to the public um, and, and won't be unless there's some type of litigation. We all know that Don died February 24th, 2010. I've been friends with Don for nine years. And uh, it kills me when I read in the media that he drowned her, he dismembered her. He did not just drown her, so she died a horrific death. And so did Alexis, he did not just drown, he had massive internal injuries. All right, so, Laurel Park, which is supervised by SeaWorld, issued a statement, this was after he died, to Park, try to- you're a hypocrite, you profited off of SeaWorld for years. Oh, no. better than the coffee. I did profit off of SeaWorld, but not very much. I mean, I made a, a, I had a paycheck from them for however many years, and, you know, I have to say I'm quite embarrassed about it. So, um, I guess your statement wasn't entirely false, but uh, <laughs> very poor form there. Yeah. Um, so, uh, thank you, thank you. 
So, thank you. I, I really appreciate it. You guys helped me a lot. I, I very much appreciate that. Thank you very much. And I really did. That was better than the coffee. So, I like that. so, um, so after Alexis was killed by uh, by Keto, Laura Park issued this statement. They said, this was an unfortunate accident. The study of the facts shows that the animal's behavior did not correspond to the way in which these marine mammals attack their prey in the wild, but was rather a shifting of position. Okay, the official autopsy report described the incident as a, quote, violent death, and listed Alexis's injuries as multiple cuts and bruises, the collapse of both lungs, fractures of the ribs and sternum, a lacerated liver, severely damaged vital organs, and puncture marks consistent with an orca's teeth. Now, all of you can see that that does not at all even resemble what Laura Park's statement was. Laura Park was trying to say that basically Alexis fell off of keto on a stand-on spy hop, and he landed on keto, and it killed him. That's what they were trying to say. When what happened was Keto grabbed him by the leg, drug him down to the bottom of the pool, and I asked Mike Scarpuzzi when we got the full count analysis, Mike Scarpuzzi is the VP of Animal Training in Seawater, California, and I asked him directly, I said, did Keto crush him on the bottom of the pool? His exact words to me were, we do not know what happened. All we know is that he, well, we believe that he, that Alexis most likely panicked and drowned because he was relatively inexperienced with water work. Once again, it fits with the theme of always blaming the trainer. Now, what was interesting about that was I found out from my own friends and colleagues, trainers that were present in Spain, of the massive amount of blood coming from Alexis's mouth and his nose as they pulled his body from the bottom of the pool. This blood, which clearly reflected his massive internal injuries, was never communicated to any of his trainers. The, so the, the only thing we were ever told was what my, how Mike Scarpuzzi answered my question. That became the standard go-to answer by all of management from that point forward. We were never told about the blood. We were never told about these massive internal injuries until we read the autopsy report. Okay, so let's... Nice. All right, investigations of Don's death. So, as you know, the U.S. Labor Department's OSHA uh, cites SeaWorld of Florida following an animal trainer's death. Now, SeaWorld called upon Jeff Andrews as their expert witness. Jeff and I worked together at SeaWorld of California. And Andrews, uh, Jeff made this um, statement in court. He testified, the only thing that led to this fatality was a mistake by Ms. Branchaw. Okay. The stinging legal defeats. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia held that SeaWorld, quote, violated its duties as an employer by exposing trainers to recognize hazards when working with killer whales. Judge Judith Rogers also wrote that a number of statements made by SeaWorld managers after incidents with killer whales, quote, do not indicate that SeaWorld safety protocols and training made the killer whales safe Rather, they demonstrate SeaWorld's recognition that the killer whales interacting with trainers are dangerous and unpredictable, and that even senior trainers can make mistakes during performances. Okay, I want to make sure I didn't have anything to add to that. These are my... Okay, um... No. Okay, we're good to go. All right, so now we're on to... Uh, the CEO of Blackstone, Steven Swarzman, he was interviewed on CNBC, and when he was asked about Don Branchaw's death, he said, SeaWorld, quote, had one safety lapse, interestingly, with a situation where the, where the person involved violated all the safety rules that we had. It had already been testified in court that Don did not break any rules or protocols, and she was interacting with Tilikum the way she was allowed to interact with Tilikum. Not the rules that she set up, but by the rules that management well above her said that this was acceptable. So she's doing her job, and yet here she's blamed for her own death by not only SeaWorld's expert witness that they called the court, but now by the CEO of Blackstone. So. 
clearly this caused a big backlash. And he was invited, Stephen Schwarzman, to come on the next day to do a retraction. He refused. But instead, he had his people issue this, once again, carefully worded, prepared statement. In answering a CNBC question, Blackstone Chairman Stephen A. Schwarzman misspoke on the details of the death of SeaWorld Killowell trainer Don Branchaw, end quote. That was it. That was their explanation after what was clearly very, very damaging and very insulting. All right, so the success of Blackfish, as most of you know, especially here in the UK, um, you know, made official selection for Sundance 2013. It was BAFTA nominated, uh, Satellite Award winner for Best Motion Picture Documentary. We had a tremendous success with CNN. It was the number one cable news program on its premiere of October 24th, 2013. These are the numbers that I like the most. It was most watched program on CNN primetime for youngest age demographic in over a decade. And now with global distribution, conservative estimates now put Blackfish viewership at more than 150 million people worldwide. So that includes, of course, you know, um, Netflix, VOD, Blu-ray, you know, that includes all of that, how, we, how they arrived at that estimate of 150 million. Okay, so, and then there, there's Gabriella looking great on the red carpet. This was our, let's see, hold on. This was our LA premiere, and uh, I can't remember if she liked this dress better or the New York one, but I did my best. <laughs> she looked great in both, but I want people to know about Gabriella because of course she comes under intense fire like I just did by these people but uh, Gabriella really approached this project from the right place and from her heart uh, she even teared up while she was interviewing me for my interview when she was asking me the question so here I was unemotional answering the questions because I had answered them so many times and she was tearing up asking me the questions and this entire process of Blackfish um, she could have cared less about uh, Academy Awards or uh, media. I mean, obviously, she needs to do it for, to, to promote her film, but she did it because she was passionate about it, like all of you are today, and she did it from the right place, and she was like a mother figure to all of us that spoke out, like Sam and Jeff and John, Carol, the rest of the other uh, uh, former SeaWorld trainers that spoke out. She just, you know, guided us through the whole process because it was a scary process because that was, for me, that was the very first time I spoke out. So I, wanna, I definitely want to give her a lot of credit. So um, you just saw Howard Garrett up on the screen. He's amazing, director of the Orca Network. Um, so incredibly knowledgeable of the whales in the Pacific Northwest, just knows everything about them, studying them for decades. Uh, of course, Dr. Naomi Rose, the Animal Welfare Institute, for nearly 30 years, she's been fighting for this cause, uh, battling people like SeaWorld, ha has had to deal with um, way worse issues that, that just happened right there, and she just, she keeps on, and she's not gonna stop. Tim Zimmerman, who's the associate producer on Blackfish, he also writes for Outside Magazine, and he was, I believe the first one to write about the death of um, Alexis, uh, uh, that Keto killed Alexis, because that had really been swept under the rug until Tim did an excellent piece uh, called Killer in the Pool. And then uh, we all love Ingrid, uh, Dr. Ingrid Visser, you know, um, just brilliant minded, uh, sweetheart, and just an expert on really all killer whales, fighting for Morgan. She's fought, I think, for four years, still fighting for the freedom of Morgan. Um, and just a um, world-renowned expert, especially on the killer whales in New Zealand. So I want to give those guys, okay? And here's the, do we have audio on this? So these were the um, clips that I just chose from Blackfish mm -hmm. that I thought resonated most with people. So let's see if we can get the audio on it though. Thank you. 
Okay, thanks. We have a um, backup DVD so that way we can watch that and have the, um, the audio with it.